In this next set of lectures, we'll talk about the, I guess you might call it the softer side of organizational strategy and development. On the one hand, the last five lectures in this module, we talked about capabilities and organizing structure and the sorts of things that you can sort of imagine or think about organizations doing and how they work. And things that individuals, like delegating authority, you can decide. You can tell somebody, I want you to do this or you to do this. And they say, yes, I'll take care of that. And then they get back to you and you evaluate them, that sort of thing. Very practical uh, positioning. But there's a whole other way to think about this problem, of course. And that is, how do you set up the conditions? How do you organize activity and people's reactions to the environment? How they feel about themselves in the context of the environment? How they so they know what's expected, what's not expected, and all of that without necessarily having someone over their shoulder telling them what to do all the time. And that's this notion of an organizational culture and the leadership that's necessary not only to create the culture, but it's ne a necessary part of the culture so that people know when to lead, how to lead, and what to do while they're leading in a culture that makes people succeed at what the organization is trying to accomplish, what it intends, how it intends to work going forward. So let's talk a little bit about what a culture is, what we mean by a culture. It's really the social environment that you find yourselves in. When you come to Adelphi University or anywhere else, you find yourself in an organization that indeed, or in a world, group of people, that behave in certain ways, think certain ways, think certain things are okay and certain things are not okay. Um, certain things are acceptable and not. There's values, there's principles that people have. Uh, organizations uh, like, for example, the Honor Code is something that is pushed by the administration. There's probably a difference in informal norms associated with some of that activity than from the formal ones that is, is instituted by the administration and the faculty. But they're the standards that people use while they interact. Um, being on time for class, uh, being uh, not speaking or not, you know, buzzing in the back and those sorts of things. Uh, there's some norms associated with that. Um, there's practices and policies about showing up and doing your scheduling and how you, you just finish registering, how you register, all those kinds of things. Um, there's an atmosphere of excitement or happiness or upbeat, positive, negative. There's different kinds of atmospheric things that are going on. People call it the work climate, if you will. When you come in, happy to be there, people smile, be supportive of one another, or not, very competitive, you know, what do you know, what do I know, how do I make sure that you don't get ahead of me, all these sorts of possible ways the climate could be, um, could be perceived by others. How one interacts, whether or not you talk about family and friends, and whether or not you have a social interaction that extends a little bit in the, in the, um, within the office, and maybe even outside of the office to some degree. Um, how much are people pressured to conform to the standard behavior, a standard dress, standard ways of talking, language to use, that sort of thing? How strong is that pressure? Is there a um, support for people that are a little bit different and, and think in different ways? Um, what is rewarded? What action is rewarded? What action is, is, uh, uh, is, uh, is discouraged? and even sometimes uh, there's some sort of punishment associated with it. Uh, what are the traditions of the organization, stories that are told, sort of the history, the, the verbal history of what's going on? And, and how does the organization treat its people and other stakeholders, its contractors? Are, are uh, temporary employees included in discussions and meetings, or are they outcasts, if you will, second-class citizens? Uh, are employees all treated equally and, and well? Um, are promotions uh, fairly administered, or is there this political environment around? All of these aspects impact when an employee comes in in the morning and starts interacting in the business environment and takes on the persona of the employee or of the person working in this firm. How does that environment drive them forward? to meet the goals of the organization, their own personal goals, their group goals, their organizational goals. How does that whole environment help them succeed, help the organization succeed going forward? 
That's the notion that we mean when we talk about culture. In the next presentation, next lecture, we'll talk about how one goes about promoting a positive culture. It's not just random. It's not just something that happens, but it's something that people make happen. And that's what we'll talk about in the next lecture.